Here's the uh, spacer. I finished making it and uh, 18 millimeters as I said for my particular lens and um, yeah you can see it fits into the uh, camera here and uh, center it. You can see it's pretty pretty tight. Um, yeah this is ebony and uh, Japanese cherry and I just kind of yeah just looks like this. Um, yeah simple spacer and the Polaroid back will mount onto here with I'm going to be using screws and um, this will mount onto the body I'll, uh, with epoxy uh, but I'll show you that later um, now though with all the um, stuff we can do to the camera basically we need to get to the grunt work and um, we need to basically fabricate a cover for this end which will be a part of the original the back uh, we'll just cut off a chunk and use it here and also um, this end there was the latch you might remember I removed that and now there's um, like nothing here and it looks a bit weird depending on your spacer thickness um, this one's quite thick it was a lot thicker than I actually expected um, but uh, this particular lens seems to need that thickness for infinity focus but um, for your lens you might actually have a, a thinner spacer um, if you have a thinner spacer when you get the back um, and you mount it on when you the back is actually um, hang on I'll get the back okay I'm uh, back here with the back and you can see that the back will mount on here like so but the problem is the back here has this hinge which sticks down and this will if, if your spacer is not thick enough to clear this hinge it will actually stick into the body here it will actually interfere here so that's why most people you see on the net um, they just chop this whole chunk off uh, so it clears this this hinge that doesn't look very nice to me and for my particular camera I don't actually need to do it but you'll need to figure out a way to accommodate that um, sticking out bit I would probably suggest just uh, kind of carving a chunk out here with a Dremel or something just enough to clear it and um, leave the rest of this bit so you can fill it with whatever and that looks probably a lot nicer because yeah just chopping the whole end off looks bad um, unless you can figure out way how to patch it up and make it look nice so anyway um because my th my spacer is thick enough um, hang on it's yeah you can see pretty thick so it'll mount on here like this and you can see it clears nicely oh uh, you can see it clears quite nicely here and um, yeah so I don't need to really cut anything out of here I'll just be filling in this hole later I'll show you how I'll do it and um, yeah I'll just have to tend to this area and any way you do it um, you'd have to kind of either chop this end off or you need to do something but I since I'm keeping this end I had to grind down this um, kind of there's a ridge here and so I just ground it down and I plan to just cover the whole area uh, you know fill this up with epoxy or something smooth it out and cover the whole area with leather. Um, I'll get to how I'm going to fill in this chunk here in a, a later episode. Uh, I have some plans. I'm not quite finalized, so I, I won't show you quite yet, but I have some pretty good plans, I think. But anyway, so you need to do something with that end. And that is one half of the grunt work. The other half of the grunt work is this door here, as I said. Now, I'm, I have the original back here, and when you open it up, you'll see all this stuff here in the, the end under the red button. And you don't need all this. <clears throat> so what I've done is, um, you can see I've actually removed this piece already. This was, I don't know what this is, but um, this was riveted in with two rivets. Uh, you can see them. Um, I just drilled them out, uh, pried this off, popped the rivets out from uh, the other side. 
can see there's holes so it's nice and clean and there's also this roller here that you don't need anymore this is actually quite heavy so you don't even need it um, I drilled those four rivets out and um, I'm going to pry it out now as you can see pry it straight out you don't need to be too careful with this And there's the roller free with the two kind of brackets. And um, yeah, I'll just punch these rivets out as well. And once you've done that, you need to, well, you don't need to, but you probably want to remove this lump here, which is quite ugly and useless. Uh, so there's four screws which will rem remove the red uh, locking side switch thing. There's just four slot head screws holding it in. And as you can see, um, we removed the four screws and there's a little kind of retaining plate you don't need. And then the switch with the little pin and that's all unneeded. So that's all the kind of junk you don't need. And now for this, I'm just going to cut this out with a, a Dremel and that will leave a, a square hole and I'll just patch it up with epoxy and a metal plate and smooth it down so it's ready for the leather.